When you've got the office, dream duo Greg Daniels and Steve Carell creating a Netflix comedy, nothing could go wrong, right? Like Raising Dion and the Babysitter's Club before it, Space Force was axed by the streaming platform after two seasons. So what went wrong? Stay tuned as we dive into why Space Force was canceled even after a promising second season. First up, the show was in trouble from season one. Space Force had the premise to deliver audiences high quality laughs and some grade A satire. It was timed perfectly by Carell and Daniels, too, after then U.S. President Donald Trump directed the Department of Defense to kick off the Space Force program back in 2019. There was an opportunity for comedy gold here, but sadly, the show couldn't deliver on its premise. It also marked the first time Carell and Greg Daniels were collaborating since The Office, and Space Force shares a similar vibe. They're both workplace comedies, and Carell's character is a bit of a schmuck with no self-awareness, but he's really likable. The show's got an all-star cast to back Carell Carell's comedic talent, including John Malkovich, Lisa Kudrow, Ben Schwartz, and Jimmy Yang. But if the show strains under its own weight, none of what we've mentioned so far really matters. Critics kind of disliked the first season. It had a few laughs in its 10 episodes. We particularly loved John Malkovich's Dr. Mallory. But ultimately, it was a mixed bag in terms of balancing its tone and delivering on its concept. The pilot episode, The Launch, had the Kokomo scene, which had us in stitches. And it was honestly great TV. But the show lost steam after that. Critics felt the same way, and so did fans, but it returned to form with season two and was much more like The Office than season one. Next, season two could have saved the show. While the first few episodes had some laughs, the show didn't know what to do with its cast. The storyline was a mixture of earnest and over the top, and it struggled to find its identity by the season finale. In contrast, the second season knew what it wanted to be, or rather, show creator Greg Daniels knew what he wanted it to be. He wanted the show to look and feel more like The Office, since that formula had worked well for Parks and Recreation, too. It dropped the cinematic look and opted for a more simplistic photography. The actors had far more leverage for improvisation, and that made their performances feel less scripted. The cafeteria and vending machine inside the base became everyone's go-to spot to meet, much like the conference room and the kitchen in The Office. One of the reasons why we love Dr. Mallory so much is because his hilarious pranks throughout Season 2 mirror the dynamic between Jim and Dwight. In fact, some themes from The Office came directly to Space Force, such as budget cuts, forcing employees to decide whether to stay or leave the team. The budget cuts felt meta, though, considering that Netflix also reduced the budget for the second season, leading to a smaller cast. But that helped the show focus on what was important, wholesome workplace comedy. But the second run came at a cost. Even though the show found its footing in season two, it needed a third season to really hit a home run. Tapping directly Director Ken Quapis to direct the entirety of season two was a smart move. He's directed several episodes of The Office and produced many more, so he knows what a show needs to do in order to replicate The Office. But season one really did a number on the critics and viewers. It was poorly received, sure, but the lack of viewership was an air raid siren for Netflix. The streaming giant slashed the budget for the show and production had to move from Los Angeles to Vancouver. As a result, several characters and entire plot lines were left out of season two. While this move did help the show streamline its ideas and find its identity, it was ultimately not enough to save it from cancellation. And now, the cost versus viewership. What it really boiled down to was the green blood pumping in Netflix's veins. Money. Netflix orders an entire season of a series at once, rather than a single pilot to see if audiences like it. They produce entire seasons to find out if viewers like the content. They pay the show's entire production cost, plus a 30% premium. Traditionally, networks used to pay a portion of the production cost, and the rest of the bill was paid by the production company. The TV show would go out to international audiences, and other networks would pick it up, and even be bought by giants such as Amazon and Netflix. The producers would keep making money, but what Netflix produces, it keeps. This isn't really appealing to traditional production teams, so Netflix offers them pay bumps and bonuses the longer a series goes, like Stranger Things, for example. It's costing the streaming platform $30 million per episode episode to make Stranger Things 4. Wow. Shows are more expensive for Netflix to produce after the second season, and even more expensive after the third. Premiums go up each season, and there's the bonuses and pay rises to producers, directors, and cast and crew. If shows cost more to produce after season two, then it'd make sense for Netflix to cancel them, especially because ordering a new show would cost them less than renewing an old one that's underperforming with viewers. So, in a nutshell, Space Force wasn't gaining significant 
stagnant popularity after its second season drop. Yes, it was miles ahead of the first season, especially with its storylines and comedic value, but it underperformed. Not many subscribers watched the show. The first 28 days are incredibly important for a TV show, whether it's Stranger Things or Space Force. The total number of subscribers that watched the show during this period ultimately decides whether it's going to be renewed. And unfortunately, Space Force didn't make the cut. Now for other news. Netflix has a cancellation problem. So, Space Force is canceled. So is Cursed. And The Babysitter's Club. And Gentified. And there's even rumors that Russian Doll might be canceled. In the words of our staff member Kyle, like, what's going on, yo? Netflix's shows are being canceled even before getting a chance to prove themselves. The streaming giant is a data-driven company and uses subscriber data to decide whether a show lives or dies. But really, who really knows why they cancel our favorite TV shows? Kyle was really upset when The Babysitter's Club got canceled. Like, why'd they do that, yo? Were his exact words, and they were probably show creator Rachel Schuchert's words, too. Along with his cancellation problem, the streaming giant also has a secrecy problem. Showrunners don't get to see the metrics they need in order to figure out how their series is performing and how to make them better. Schuchert thought Babysitter's Club was doing fine when viewed in a vacuum. She didn't really get the metrics to compare her show's numbers with, say, Squid Game. This is a common theme among show creators who feel like the finish line keeps moving further away, and what makes it worse is that they don't know how the line has been moved. The variables that make a show a hit or miss aren't disclosed to them. Netflix lays off 150 employees. So, what happens when you cancel fan-favorite shows, have millions of people sharing accounts, and have to compete with Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, and Amazon Prime? You lose about 200,000 subscribers, your share prices drop, and you need to slash budgets across the company. In more recent news, Netflix has laid off 150 employees, mostly U.S.-based, due to the decline in subscribers and subsequent loss of revenue. While a breakdown of the 150 employees laid off hasn't been released, a number of them were in executive-level positions in the original content front. Netflix released a statement saying that the slowed growth in revenue meant that they had to slow down their cost growth as a company. The platform is expecting to make up for this loss by investing heavily in original shows like the upcoming Stranger Things 4 and a new season of Cobra Kai. It's also focusing on more original movies from high-profile directors such as Joe and Anthony Russo's The Gray Man and Rian Johnson's Knives Out 2. Clearly, Netflix is gambling on its 2022 projects, and we for once would love to see how this plays out for the streaming giant. Netflix considers live streaming reality and stand-up TV. The platform won't go down easily. It's always been experimental, with Black Mirror, Bandersnatch being a prime example. They've also released reality TV and stand-ups that took audiences by storm. Bo Burnham, Inside, and Too Hot to Handle became two of the platform's best hits between 2020 and 2021. According to Deadline, Netflix is experimenting with live streaming certain programs and will roll it out with unscripted TV or certain stand-up comedy like future Netflix is a joke events. Viewers could potentially vote in real time for competitions such as Dance 100 and watch live finales or reunions of popular reality series such as Selling Sunset. While this is still in its infancy, we're excited to see where this development leads, because we'd love to watch Bo Burnham entertain us live in the comfort of our homes. Kyle would certainly love that. And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. So, were you upset when Space Force got canceled? What do you think of Netflix's cancellation problem? Tell us in the comments. As always, hit like if you liked our content and consider subscribing so you never miss out on future uploads. Till next time.